What's up, gang? Welcome to another episode where me and Lucas are at Charborough Estate in the heart of Dorset, and we have the privilege of working up there because at the moment we are molding a life-size stag for the estate. It's actually uh, it started crumbling. The people that own the estate thought that vandals had come along and pulled the antlers down off it. But just over being there for so long, it's just decayed. And our job now is to take a mold of this beast and then cast a bronze to replace it. And quite frankly, I'm really looking forward to getting this finished because it is gonna look absolutely amazing. But it's not every day you get to say you're working up on top of an archway for your day-to-day -day job. So uh, without further ado, let's get rolling and let's start the mold <laughs> So basically, I've got a stupid fear of heights. And uh, if anything's gonna cure them, it's these ladders. I mean, these ladders are, I mean, it looks like they're made of noodles. A ladder, I don't think a ladder should be this rickety. But I mean, it's got a slight flex in the middle, but I don't, I don't wanna keep doing that because, uh, well, I don't want it to break. The key is to not look down. And to carry rubber up here is a whole nother level of just stupidity. They're actually coming to install a hoist today up the top so we don't have to keep bringing rubber up by the 20 kilo tub. But uh, anyways, let's get to it. <laughs> up to the third level we go. Ahoy there! I'm coming for you, Lucas! I'm coming for you! Now let's get to work! Right, gang, now we finally made it up the scaffolding. It's time to get to work. Lucas is just finishing off the shims of the head. But yesterday, we had to make start on actually applying all of this rubber. Now, we did the flow coat as you've seen in the previous episode. But on this episode, we have um, applying the butter coat, the first and the second butter coat. As you can tell by my clothes, looking like a plaster's radio, we really got stuck in yesterday. And so what we've done in between each layer is we used this quad axle matting. And the reason for this matting, normally used for jesmonite. So it's similar, uh, it's got similar properties as fiberglass, but uh, for jesmonite, which is like a stone-based plaster. Uh, but what we use it for is we use it for in, uh, putting in between uh, each layer of rubber, especially on large sections of rubber like this. What it does, it stops it from tearing and the weight of itself sort of tearing over time. Because the last thing you want is to have this mold ruined by just pulling it off and then the weight of itself, it's such a dead weight, it ends up tearing the rubber. So we put this in between each layer uh, just to stop that from happening. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix up some rubber and I'm gonna start applying the butter coat to the flow coat on the inside of the layer. So what I'm gonna mix up, I'm gonna mix up 2,000 grams of silicon. Uh, and because we've got a super fast cure catalyst, it's normally a 10 to 1, but this stuff's so fast, it's actually a 5 to 1 mix. So to every 100 grams, you add 5 grams. And actually, even that is a little bit too much because it goes off super quick. But um, if you're a novice to mold making, I advise you getting the slow cure catalyst, which is a 10 to 1. This is a Celastic uh, 3481 silicon. Actually, no, I, I lied to you. This is actually an RTV 128 silicon, and it's a 20 kilo tub, and this is a one kilo tub of catalyst, and one of these equate to a bucket of rubber. So, in theory, once this is run out, you should have run out of this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix up 2,000 grams of uh, rubber, and then I'm gonna add 100 grams of catalyst. Wow. 2,000. 2,000. Two 
So we're going to have 100 grams of catalyst. This stuff here is a thixotropic agent and without it, it just, it's almost like a milky consistency. As soon as you add a dash of this, it turns into a nice thick butterscotch mix. And that's what you want when you're trying to apply your butter coat to add over your flow coat. So you add your flow coat first, that's without any thick so that captures all of the detail. But then the thick tropic agent, once you add that, it's nice and thick, you can apply it with the spatula and you're good to go. So instead of mixing it up by hand, we have a drill with a paddle on the end of it. Yeehaw! Actually, you don't want all that rubbish in there. So then, pop it in. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. You can almost feel it change instantly with that fixo added. You get it nice and thick. Lovely. Right. I'm going to use a brush for the first layer. So the first layer, if you just look through here, Jordan, in here you've got your flow coat layer. Now, because we left it overnight, um, I don't really fancy just spatulating it on because um, sort of dust and, and bits that may have got on there that would create some sort of delamination. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my brush and I'm going to really massage it onto the surface like so. Really get it on there. And plus this just really helps getting into all those edges, all those seams. So then you're never left with any air bubbles in your butter coat. Because Lucas has to actually put another shim uh, between the back legs here so this panel pops out because otherwise if he didn't you'd have a trouble getting that off uh, once it's all been fiberglass. So we put a divide shim there and a divide shim here and that allows this section to be removed. But until he's done that I'm not going to put the first layer of butter coat on so I'm going to remove, I'm oh, sorry, remove, I'm going to move over to this side and then we're going to start applying another butter coat to this lovely sort of uh, swirly rubber. I'm just going to pop it on there like this, so. Yesterday, Lucas actually prepared a lot of these quad axles or squares, um, and this is obviously too dry, and if you try and stick it on, it falls away. So I just had to apply a thin layer of rubber to the dry stuff, and as you can see, all this is quite keyed up. Uh, and the reason for this is one, it kind of, uh, in theory, removes the bubbles uh, from the, the, the bottom to the surface, and then it also leaves a nice rough surface for the next layer of rubber to key onto. So I am just going to generously pop this matting, overlapping slightly so that it's not ever separate and it creates a stronger bond. So I'm just gonna pop that on, just tapping it on so it sticks to the surface. And as you can see, it's holding there quite nicely. just generously apply the next layer of rubber obviously going uh, towards the overlaps because if you go against them they f like flop up like that so you almost want to stick it down again and just start putting on a nice thick layer and this is what creates a really strong bond Until tomorrow to fix my problems of today. Cause it's just no quick trick I can follow to find my day today. And if you ask me how I do it, 
I probably just don't know Because I'm living a few lives Trying to find one to show so the one thing I really love about this project is the fact that it's such an iconic piece. There are so many other foundries in this country and we've been lucky enough to be picked to actually mould and cast this job, which means a great deal to me uh, and a great deal to the team. And it's just such, a, it's such an iconic piece. People drive past every day. If you just look at this road, I mean, this road is such a busy road. It's the A31. Every day people are driving past and they can see it. And so for all of the locals to know that it's being restored uh, and it's just gonna live on forever. Bronze is as internal as diamonds, as Mr. Steve Winterbun says. Um, and yeah, just really, really happy that this is a project that we get to be a part of. So uh, roll on to more good projects. As you can see, all the cards are still exposed and I bet you're thinking to yourself, why haven't you put rubber on it yet, Rich? Well, yesterday, as you can imagine, the weather in England just isn't great in general. And it was windy, it was 40 mile an hour winds. We've got this roof on top of the scaffolding and the, and the sides are completely open. And so yesterday, <laughs> trying to put the rest of the cards on, it was flapping around like a good one. So what we've done is we just put the rubber up against the edge so that it's actually more secure. So now today we can go around without worrying that they're gonna fall off um, and uh, actually start building up these flanges. Uh, and the idea for these is so that, again, as I mentioned, it divides the rubber, but also you put a layer of rubber over the top of here. Then once you're ready to put your fiberglass jacket on, you can uh, cut holes in the rubber um, uh, normally what you would do is we put little clay discs on, this, on these cards. We put rubber over the top. The rubber would then mold the clay disc. Once the rubber's gone off, you remove the little clay buddy and it leaves you with a hollow. And then you put your fiberglass or your resin in those holes and it acts as locators for the jacket to go onto the rubber so that the rubber stays in place. But once this is all done, because we, didn't, we, we haven't done this, Right? because it was so windy and rainy that the weight of the clay would just pull them off. So we're gonna have to improvise. We're gonna have to cut them in afterwards. And so we're gonna go over these with rubber today, hopefully get the majority of the rubber done today. And then uh, once this is all done, we're gonna then commence with the fiberglassing. And uh, if you wanna see that, then tune in because uh, it's gonna be a wild ride. I'm on top of the world! Okay, that's enough. Too scary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, I don't wanna, this is... No, this is too, too, I'm too scared. Too scared of heights.